Okay. okay. Make right. sure we move out. My Everybody. bad. <laughs> oh, 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 my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Is that? Can you tilt the little open hand? I don't know if that's going to fix This? No, no. Like, like the channel too, like, can you tilt this towards a little bit? Right yeah. here? I don't know where this one goes. There you go. Okay. Here we go. We got it now? <clears throat> you guys ready? I will be making a brief statement and not taking questions today because my attorney, A. Scott Bolden, will make himself available at a later time. I thought it was important to be seen and heard today for a number of reasons. First of all, I wanted the citizens of Baltimore to know that as your state's attorney, I am wholly committed to the job and working with my esteemed colleagues in the state's attorney's office to carry out the mission of creating a safer, healthier community for everyone in this city. Nothing is more important than that. I also need citizens who I am blessed to serve to know that I am innocent of the charges that have been levied against me and I intend to fight with every ounce of energy within my being to prove my innocence and to clear my name. As a black woman, a lawyer, a wife, and a mother looking to serve my community, I sought elected office because I knew there was so much more we could do and should be doing to bridge the divide between the criminal justice system and the communities that we are entrusted to serve. No one thought I could win. We had very little money and even less name recognition but we knew that things had to change in the city of Baltimore and around this country, and so we fought. And what started out as a real impossibility and a dream eventually became a victory. I never looked at my ascension to the state's attorney as a victory for Marilyn Mosby, but honestly, I saw this blessing as the acknowledgement and my marching orders from the people of this city that things had to change and we had to do more to make our communities safe and to make progressive change in the criminal justice system. I believe now, as I believe then, that those two objectives are not mutually exclusive and could be and must be achieved simultaneously. I expected the job to be hard. I expected long hours and sleepless nights I expected criticism and critique from both the media and the citizens. I expected to miss games and recitals and to sacrifice much of the time and energy it takes to raise two little girls so that I could do my part as a public servant to achieve the goals and objectives of the state's attorney's office. What I did not expect was to be personally mocked and ridiculed, sued, or to have to incessantly fight to keep my law license. I did not expect to receive hate mail and death threats and to have the safety of my daughters compromised by the media. I did not expect to need 24 hour armed security. I did not expect to incur personally more than $500,000 in legal bills, defending myself from frivolous investigations and attacks on nearly every front. I did not expect for an investigation into my professional travel, which I asked for to somehow snowball into state ethics and state election board inquiries, federal investigations, and ultimately a federal indictment. I'm so disappointed, but unfortunately not shocked that my family and I find ourselves in this position. You see, ever since I walked down the steps of the War Memorial on May 1st, 2015, announced charges against six police officers in the killing of Freddie Gray, I have had a target on my back and I get it. As a state's attorney for Baltimore City, I've used my power and my discretion to do things that a lot of people in this country just don't like. I've sought to ensure one standard of justice regardless of race gender, zip code, or occupation. 
I've prosecuted several police officers for violating the rights of citizens. I've sought to end the war on drug users and people of color by decriminalizing drug possession and sex work. I've fought for second chances for people serving life sentences. I've exonerated 12 innocent black men that the justice system wanted to rot in prison for more than 300 years for crimes they didn't commit. I get it. This is not what prosecutors usually do. And many people will forever hate me for it. Because of my commitment to racial justice, I've had to contend with powerful institutions that have come after me by any means necessary. Donald Trump called for me to be prosecuted several years ago, and I fought back against his administration. I fought back against the governor who plays politics and doesn't like my policies. I fought back against the consistent harassment of the Fraternal Order of Police. I fought back against the right-wing media that trades on misinformation and scape scaremongering. I fought back against the same U.S. Attorney's Office that is charging me now when they warned me not to charge the police in the Freddie Gray case. I fought back against the exact same federal prosecutors prosecuting me now who maliciously and erroneously implicated my office in the Gun Trace Task Force scandal. What I've come to learn in fighting for what's right is that there are many in this country wholly committed to defending the status quo who also realize that those of us who are equally committed to dismantling the status quo represent a threat to business as usual in this city and in this country. I get it. But the people who sent me here did so because they know we need to fight against mass incarceration and dismantle the status quo of the criminal justice system that has devastated far too many families and communities in this city and in this country. Quite simply, I fight for those who don't have enough people fighting for them in place. I firmly believe that differences in ideology, policy positions, and governing philosophies are fair game and should be passionately debated and heavily scrutinized. That's democracy at work. But our differences in policies and governing should not make any of us subject to unreasonable and unyielding, abusive attacks, investigation, and prosecution. I'm here before you today to state unequivocally that I am innocent and I, int I intend to do what I've always done since I became state's attorney for the city and in the city that I love, fight. I will fight these charges with everything I have in me and I will be victorious because as a woman of faith I know and I stand firmly in the promises of Isaiah 54, 17 that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm built for this and I will not be distracted from doing my job. Clearly there are limits to what I can say and you will certainly be hearing from my legal representatives soon. But I wanted the people of Baltimore to hear it from me. I have done nothing wrong. I did not defraud anyone to take my money from my retirement savings. And I did not lie on any mortgage application. Prior to yesterday's indictment, I offered to prove my innocence by making myself available to present exculpatory evidence to the grand jury. But the U.S. attorney and the lead prosecutor in the case, who has donated to my political opponents and who has personal animus towards me, has refused to allow me to do so. Please don't be fooled. We are now five months from our next election, and this indictment is merely a political ploy by my political adversaries to unseat me. But please also understand that I will never let that happen without a fight. I truly appreciate everyone who's reached out with encouraging words and positive energy in every prayer that has been sent my way. My family and I are deeply humbled by the support and I assure you that we are as committed as ever to continuing to fight for the people and the city that we love. Thank you.